Today we're going to take some notes. It's a review lesson over 9-1 to 9-3 for our quiz that we'll be taking tomorrow. I want us to go over some vocab words that are very important that we're going to need to know. So the first thing I want you to think of, if you would, draw a little circle off to the side. And this one says, this is the distance from the center, so just put a little dot there for the center, to any point on the circle. So here I'm going to go off to the right. You could go any point. Guys, what is that little distance called? Radius. That is the radius. Use your red pen and fill that in in the blank. The next one says, this is the distance across the circle through the center. So going, here's the center. It goes all the way across. What's that called? Diameter. The diameter. Look carefully at how it's spelled. The next one asks for the distance around the outside of a circle. Okay, so right here, what is that distance? What do you guys call it? Circumference. The circumference is correct. And I have taught you two formulas for circumference. Raise your hand if you remember one of the formulas for the circumference of a circle or the outside of a circle. Caleb? Five times Excellent. Everyone write C equals pi times D. And this is also on those little flashcards that we made in class yesterday. There's one more. C equals, what was it, class? 2, two pi, 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 pi. Two pi R. Because if you remember, two radiuses equals one diameter. So that formula should hopefully make sense. Let's look at some other important information. Pi has two values. What's the decimal value for pi? 3.14. Or there was a fraction I gave you. Do you guys remember that one? 22 divided by 7. Now we have some formulas that you're going to want to have memorized. The area of a circle. Does anyone remember that? You also can look at your flashcards right now if you want to help you. Kyla, what do you think? You are correct, pi r squared. Now, if you know that formula, you should be able to find the area of a semicircle formula pretty easily. Zariana, what do you think it is? Um, a equals pi r squared divided by You are correct, okay? All she did was cut it in half or divide it by two. The next one is the area of a triangle. Hey, Lynn. A equals uh, one half base of pi you are correct. One half times base times height. Now, if you remember in our notes from yesterday, we talked about when you have a right angle, the bottom part of that right angle is the base, and the part that goes up and down is the height. This part right here, the diagonal, will never be the base or the height. Okay, so you'll want to know that and remember that. Next up, the area of a square. What is that one? Kyla? S squared. Very good. A equals S squared. This, I remember S for square, okay? Square starts with an S, so I just think all you're doing is you're multiplying one side by the other side. And finally, area of a rectangle, what would it be, class? A okay, the length times the width. And that's the formula for area of a rectangle. Remember, you want to have these memorized for your quiz tomorrow and your test next week on Wednesday. Okay, so the first instructions ask us to find the diameter. If you look right here, remember, this is the center to the edge of the circle. What do we call that? Radius. That's the radius. So, class, if the radius is 5 meters, what would the diameter be? 10, Ten meters. Hey, Lynn, how did you know that? Because uh, 5 times 2 is 10. Very good. All he did was he doubled it. He did 5 times 2. So the distance all the way across would have been doubled, so the diameter would have been 10. Let's do just the opposite. For the next one, it asks us to find the radius. If you look, it has given us the diameter because it's that distance all the way across the circle. So, Zion, what would the radius be? 12 inches. Very good. And how'd you find that? Very good. All you had to do was find what half of it was because we just needed to know half of 24. Let's go to the next one. This asks us to find the circumference. Remind me again, what does the word circumference mean? Distance around, Distance around, around a circle. Distance around a circle. So it's like the perimeter of a circle. What we want to do every time is identify what the radius and the diameter are. 
If this gave me from the center to the edge, what is that called? Radius. The radius. Directly underneath your shape, I want everyone to write the radius is 21 millimeters. Caleb, what would the diameter be if the radius is 21? 42. 42. How'd you find that? Okay, he just multiplied it times 2. He doubled it. So now we've got to think back to the circumference formula. Up there in the top of our notes, we wrote down two formulas. Circumference equals, what are the two formulas? Okay, C equals pi times D, or C equals 2 times pi times R. It does not matter to me which one you use. Simply because I gave you guys the radius for this formula right now, we're going to use C equals 2 pi R, but I'm going to show you in just a second that you would get the same formula or the same answer if you do C equals pi times D. So let's start with this top formula, C equals 2 times pi times R. Guys, what's pi? Okay, so we could do 3.14 or we could do 22 over 7. And what is the radius? 21. All right, go ahead and multiply that out. When you multiply all those numbers together, class, what do you get? 131.88. It says up here to round to the nearest whole number. So if you rounded that to the nearest whole number, remember the whole number is the number to the left of the decimal point, what would your answer be? Okay, 132 what? Millimeters. Millimeters. Should I square the units? Nope. Why not? Because we're not finding the area. We are not finding the area. Now watch, you don't have to write this down, but if I did C equals pi times D, 3.14, and then we know our diameter up here is 42. Put that in your calculators for me, guys. What is 314 times 42? 131.88. If you rounded that, what would you get? 132. Is that the same answer we got up there? Yes. So that's why when you're doing circumference, it doesn't matter if you use C equals 2 pi R or C equals pi D because you will get the same answer. All right? I want you and your partner to do number four together. Okay, as I walked around, I saw different people doing it different ways, but most people came up with the same answer. How many of you would say you use the formula C equals pi times D? All right, that's the one that I'm going to use specifically because the original problem gave us the diameter. Now, here's what I didn't see a lot of people do. C equals pi times D. What would you guys put in for pi? 3.14. There's another one that you could have used for pi. What was the fraction? Let me show you how easy this one would have been for 22 over 7. And here's the only reason why. The number it gave us there, the diameter, is divisible by 7. So look at this. I could multiply it by 7. Can anything there cancel out? The 7s can both cancel out. And what's left? 22. Would you say that was easier than the way you did it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Did you have to round here? Yes. Not the way that I did it, okay? If you did 3.14 and multiplied it by 7, what did you guys get there? 21.98. And then you had to round it, okay? And did you round up? Yes. So here's the deal. You still got the same answer, but which way was faster this time? Using this 22 over 7. So here, 22 divided by 7 is a good one to use if the original problem is divisible or can go into a 7. All right, let's flip to the back of our notes. This one asks us to find the perimeter of the semicircle. Remind me again, guys, what does perimeter mean? So here's what I'm looking for. The distance around the top and the bottom. I want the distance all the way around that semicircle. Let's identify first, what has it given to me? From this point to there, is that the radius or the diameter? The radius. Underneath your shape, everyone, I want you to put R equals 4 centimeters. Anson, if the radius is 4, what is the diameter? 8. Very good, because all you have to do is double it. If this part right there is 4, if I wanted to keep extending it, it would be 4 more, and that would be 8 total. So now let's think of what we need to discover. First things first, this area, what I like to call also it looks like a rainbow, is a mystery to us right now. Guys, what's the outside part of a circle called? 
Circumference. How many formulas do we know for a circumference? We know two of them, okay? You could use, since it gave us the radius right here, we could use 2 pi r, or you could use pi times d. But that is for the circumference of a whole circle. Is this a whole circle? No. Oh, this is a half a circle, so we've got to divide it by 2. When I divide this by 2, is there anything that can cancel out? 2 and 2. I can get rid of 2 and 2 because 2 divided by 2 is 1. All right? If you don't want to cancel it out, you don't have to. You'll get the same answer. What should we put in for pi? 3.14. 3.14. Okay? Because when I look at this number right here, that's not divisible by 7. So using 22 divided by 7 would be a lot of extra work. What is the radius? 4. So I'm going to multiply it by 4. Adam, when you multiply those two together, what is the circumference or the outside part of the circle? 12.56. Okay, 12.56, and that is centimeters. Should I square the units? No. No, why not? I'm not finding the area. So right here, what I found here is just that question mark. But my instructions didn't say just to find the circumference of the circle. It said to find the perimeter. So I shouldn't just have 12.56. That would be my circumference. But I also have to add the bottom part of that semicircle. What's the bottom part of the semicircle called? Diameter. It's called the diameter. And you guys just told me, how much is it worth? Eight. Eight. So we're going to take what we just learned, the circumference, 12.56, plus add in... The diameter. Once again, we know this whole bottom part right here is going to be 8. All right, 20.56 what? Centimeters. Centimeters. Any questions on how to find the perimeter or the outside part of a semicircle? Okay, let's go on to problem number 6. It says to find the area of the circle. Remember, every time at the beginning, we're going to find out if it gives us the diameter or the radius. Christopher, which one does it give me? It gave me the diameter. So directly underneath it, just tell yourself the diameter is 40 inches. Lexi, what will the radius be? Uh, 20. 20 inches is correct. All right, I want you and your partner to find the formula for area of a circle, then start plugging the numbers in to find the area. All right, help me out. The hardest part is identifying what formula you need to use, guys. What's the area of a circle a formula? Pi r to the second power. Repeat after me. A equals pi r squared. A equals pi r squared. All right, Kaylin, what did you use for pi? Um, Anson, what was the radius? 20. And then we have to square it. Let me show you what I saw quite a few people do. Raise your hand if you can identify where the mistake is right now. Yeah. Hey, Lynn, what's the mistake? Um, you put 20 times 2. Not if you look right here, guys, 20 squared does not mean 20 times 2. It means 20 times 20 times, 20 times itself. So instead, 20 times 20 is 400. 400. When you multiply those together, what would you get? 1,256 inches squared. Okay, this is another thing I saw. People said square inches. Do you know what that looks like when I see square inches like that? It looks like a random two. If you want to do it like that, put your square like that, okay? Or you can put inches squared, but just be careful. Remember, with area, you always have to square the unit. Next thing, find the area of the semicircle. Guys, what does it give me, the radius or the diameter? Uh, the radius. That is the radius. So what would the diameter be? Eight. Eight. Eight inches, all right? Do this one with your partner and see if you can get the right answer. The same answer. I know. All right, guys, first things first, let's start with our formula. What's the formula for area of a semicircle? Okay, don't say pi r2, but say pi r squared so that you know it's not just a 2, okay? So it looks like everyone used 3.14. The radius was 4. We have to square it and divide by 2. Class, what is 4 squared? Um, 16. 16. Did anyone cross-reduce here? Yes. All right, how many of you would say you did cross-reduce? 
You should see whether you cross-reduced or not, you could get the same answer. Class, what's the answer? What is it? It should have been 25.12 inches squared. Okay, so a mistake that was made right here, someone crossed out the 4 and the 2. Do you guys remember PEMDAS? According to PEMDAS, you have to make sure you do the exponents before you do multiplication and division, okay? So that's why we couldn't do that. Any other mistakes that you noticed you did? Okay. Okay. All right, for this final one, we have a composite figure. If you remember, a composite figure means it is made up of two separate figures. So let's just identify down here. What is the composite figure you see at the bottom, class? A rectangle. It's not a square because they are not equal lengths. This is a rectangle. So help me to identify what would that side be worth? Four. You could see this would be the same as that side over there. So everyone, I want you to write a little four for four feet. What would this side down here be? Six. How do you find that? Okay, that is the same size, so that one down there is going to be six feet. Okay, does everyone understand that? Yeah. When you have composite figures, I want you to identify any side links that you can just by looking at it. Do that right there at first. Here's one that's kind of a mystery that's hard for us to know. What is the outside of a semicircle called? Circumference. So we're going to have to do that here in just a minute. Let's start first with the perimeter. As we do the perimeter, what does perimeter mean? The outside of it. Okay, so what's one outside thing that we know on our shape down here? The four feet. The four feet. We know that four feet right there. So let's put down. We know there's four feet. What else do we see on the outside? Six feet. Six feet right down here at the bottom. So we're going to add in that six. What else do we know? Four. We also know the other four. What else do we know? Six. Incorrect. Oh, it's not in the the six is down here. That's the top of the rectangle. The outside part of our semicircle is still a mystery. But there's a formula that helps me to find the circumference of a circle. Let's identify what we know here, guys. The bottom part, did this give me the diameter or the radius? It gave me the diameter all the way across. What's our circumference formula we know with a diameter? Uh, C, equals pi times C. C equals pi times D. So we have to add in pi times D, but it's not a full circle. It's a half a circle, so I have to divide it by 2. two. two. All right, let's add all the sides we know. So, class, what's 4 plus 6? 10. 10. Plus 4 more? 14. 14. 14. So we know down here that answer is going to be 14 plus now we are just working on this part right here which is our question mark that we have down there. Class, what's pi? 3.14. 3.14. What's my diameter? Um, 6. 6 divided by 2. Can I reduce anything there? Yes. Yes. They become a? Three. Uh, one and a, three. a 1 and a 3. All right, so according to PEMDAS, we know we don't add first. Instead, I need to do this multiply work first. Boys, what's 3.14 times 3? What did you get, Gerard? 9.42. So what you just figured out is this mystery thing right here. This length on the outside is 9.42 feet. So now we can add, we know down here the bottom part, this whole thing was 14. Add the 9.42 to get us the entire perimeter of this composite figure. And what's the answer? 23.42. Should I round that? No. No. Should I square the units? No. I am not finding the area for that. It was just the perimeter. So that is the correct answer. Okay. Class, what are the two shapes that you see make up this composite figure? Okay, very good. So, 
I want you to write this. We've got a rectangle plus a semicircle. The order does not matter because when you're adding them, you're going to get the same exact thing. All right? So, guys, what's the formula for the area of a rectangle? You can look at your notes. You can look at your note cards. A, A equals length times width. Oh. Length times width. Oh. Plus? Plus. 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 Length times width. Oh. Plus. What is the area of a semicircle's formula? Everyone say that. Pi R squared divided by 2. Let's talk first about the length and the width which we know this did tell us it was six feet originally right there, okay? So, guys, what's the length and the width? Six and four. Six and four. It doesn't matter if you say four times six or if you say six times four. You're going to get the same answer either way. Plus, Anson, what is pi? What's the value of pi, Anson? Three point one four. Now it's asking me to find the radius of this semicircle. Class, if we know that this distance all the way across was six, what would the radius be? Three. 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 How'd you get that? Because half of six is three. You just cut it in half. Okay, so my radius is three. I've got to square it and still divide by two because it's a semicircle. Adam, what is the area of the rectangle? Um, four times six. What is four times six? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. So what we have just figured out is down here in orange, that's 24 feet squared. Now we're trying to still figure out the distance or the area of the semicircle. Plus... What should I do first in my semicircle mess? Okay, parentheses. Is there any work to do inside of these parentheses? No. Exponents come next. Are there any exponents? Yes. Justice, what's 3 squared? 9. nine. So now I've got 3.14 times 9 divided by 2. Let's do some of that work right here. Class, what is 3.14 times 9? Okay, 28.26, so I'm going to go ahead and replace that right here, 28.26. Divide that by 2, 14.13. So what you guys just told me is the area up here is 14.13. Now, in order to identify what this whole composite figure would be, what do I do with those two? Add them together. When you add that, Zion, what do you get? 28.13. Units? Why did you square the units? because you're finding the area, okay? That's another reason why it's important to put this right here, the A, because that helps you to remember, okay, I'm finding the area of that right there. Okay, I hope that this helped you. Um, don't forget, we do have a quiz tomorrow over 9-1 to 9-3.